So now that we've got some quadrat data, we've done some surveying of plant species and their relative abundances, you can use the data to do a number of calculations on the back end. So this is a, an introductory course and we won't go into details on these. Obviously the calculations can get kind of heavy, but basically you can learn a whole bunch about your habitat and uh, concrete reportable numbers that you can get based on counting and uh, identifying plant species. So uh, the plants that I was identifying in the field that uh, really quickly I went through on the video and showed you the plants that were found in the quadrat. Uh, I've put them into a spreadsheet as quadrat one to get a representative survey of the whole habitat. You'd want to do several quadrats, cover the whole area, randomize so that you are kind of basically uh, exhausting uh, the survey technique or surveying enough that you get something representative. So obviously you don't want to waste your time counting every plant in the habitat, but you also don't want to come up a little short. Uh, you can there actually are methods you can use to find out if you've surveyed enough. Okay, so I've got them uh, sorted by scientific name here. Good to keep track of the scientific names, even though those might not be intuitive to you at the beginning. Uh, and then relative abundance, so kind of rounded to some big numbers. So 1, 50, 100, and so on in these different species. And quadrat 1 is the one we did in the video, and then these other quadrats are other uh, portions of the habitat and relative abundances of species in those portions of the habitat. So let me zip over to a presentation here. Uh, these are measures of diversity. There are many ways to measure diversity. Uh, really simply, diversity can be taken as the number of species in a given area. So uh, there's a form called alpha diversity. That's this funny little letter here. Alpha diversity can be measured simply as the number of species you counted. So maybe we'll even start with that. We can go over to our data. Uh, I've got our data on the left here window and then uh, just sort of a summary spreadsheet over on the right. So alpha diversity, uh, maybe an easy way to do this, we could just sort by the uh, column there and we're going to count those up. So it's giving me the sum of those numbers, but I need to count them. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 species in quadrat 1, quadrat 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 species. Much lower diversity there. Quadrat 3, sort by that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And quadrat 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. So just really simply, you could go across those numbers and say, all right, how many uh, species do we have in these different quadrats? You could take the overall, uh, maybe we'll put a total in here, total number of species, uh, simply the total number of rows we have here. So notice every row has an entry for at least one of these quadrats. Uh, I've left quadrat five out. Uh, probably just save on our calculations not to count that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oops, try again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20, 1, 2, 3. All right, 23, uh, not counting, we're going to ignore this plant that was only in quadrat 5. So 23, kind of interestingly, this is of course not the sum of any two of these values. There's going to be some overlap. So uh, basically, if we kept counting, we might keep increasing this estimate of total species. We can keep finding species that might be rare, might be partitioned in smaller parts of the habitat, or something like that. Uh, so that's sort of trying to get this big picture. One way of getting a picture of diversity in a habitat is just to summarize what species are there, uh, regardless of how many. Now, the how many can become important. We're not really going to emphasize that in this class, but I did want to show you that that uh, is data you probably want to record and uh, certainly will become useful in other calculations down the road. If, you, uh, if you're if you curious about those, feel free to ask me sometime. Okay, so we've got estimates of our alpha diversity. Uh, we could point to quadrat one and say, hooray, we have the greatest alpha diversity there. Okay, fantastic. What does that mean? Uh, what about comparing across different habitats. So there's another measure called beta diversity. 
which compares the diversity of one sample site to the diversity in another sample site. So beta diversity would be low if uh, all the species we find in the first plot are also the same species we find in the second plot. Beta diversity would be high if we surveyed this and found a few species and then surveyed here and got a whole new set of species. That would be really high beta diversity. Uh, beta diversity would tell you that maybe there's some difference, some micro difference in the habitat or simply that you're not surveying enough to really encapsulate all the diversity. So there's just lots of plant species out there. Um, but presumably if there's really high beta diversity, there's actually something different about these habitats, uh, which is certainly not too surprising in the field. There are definitely differences among habitats. So uh, if we survey a few different spots, this is a nice maybe graphic about the habitat types that we've got here. Um, you might determine that you've got different uh, habitat types across different sides of this line, uh, different, say you've got wet areas, dry areas, sunny areas, shady areas, different nutrient availability, anything like that. You could uh, run the numbers and say, well, are these actually that different or are they maybe just basically equivalent across? Uh, so we're going to calculate this one feature here, this Jacquard index as a measure of uh, beta diversity. And it's a pretty simple calculation. You take the number of species that are found in both habitat types and divide that by the total number of species found. So what we're going to use this for, we're going to actually compare our quadrats uh, two at a time. So just pairwise comparisons of quadrats. And then maybe see if we can find the quadrats that are most similar to each other. So I'm going to calculate, I'm going to show you the calculation for uh, just the card index. For these, uh, not terribly complicated. I'll do the ones that compare to quadrat one. So let me uh, sort by one again. So comparing one to two, we have one, two species that are found in both, and the total number of species. Let's see. I'm going to put that in as my denominator. Hope that holds up there. Sorry, two is the numerator. And total number of species is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 16, plus 17, 18, 19. So there are 19 species found uh, in the sum of those two quadrats, and only two species are in common. So I'm going to guess that'll be a pretty low Jacquard index there. Uh, let me see. I'm going to sort these and see if that cleans it up a little bit, makes this faster. All right, quadrat three compared to quadrat one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these are the same lines that we also have entries in quadrat one. So equals seven out of, and then the total in common would be. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 18 in common, and, or sorry, 18 total, and 7 of those are in common. So our similarity between 3 and 1 is much greater than the similarity between 2 and 1. Uh, you get a number for that, but hopefully you can just look at the species that are present and, and really see that in the numbers, right? So there are not many species found in quadrat 2 and only a couple of those are also found in quadrat one. That makes sense to get a low number there. Uh, finally, quadrat four, I'm gonna sort four and then sort by one. And just go for lines that have an equivalent number in quadrat one. That's one, two, three, four, five, six is our numerator here. Equals six out of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 6 out of 21. Okay, so uh, 4 more similar to 1 than 2 was to 1. Uh, kind of makes sense. There's a lot of overlap in these species that are found, uh, but also quite a few that are unique in this comparison to quadrat 4. All right, so I'm going to ask you guys to calculate these three other boxes that are remaining. So the similarity between 2 and 3, 
the similarity between two and four and the similarity between three and four. And uh, what we can do, you can round these yourself or you could enter a formula. Uh, if you do a calculation and turn into the round formula, you can do equals round parentheses and then comma number of decimals you want to round to. Uh, we're going to do three this time. So that's one way to get that. Obviously you should be able to round numbers by yourself, but sometimes I like showing you what Excel can do. Uh, of course this is the Google Sheets, the clone of Excel that's freely available if you don't happen to have Microsoft Excel. Okay, so we got our three numbers here rounded to the third digits, the uh, thousandths place, and you can calculate the other three here and enter that as part of your assignment.